Virtually every country in East and Southern Africa is a nation of mourners. Large parts of Africa, a continent home to approximately 800 million people, or around 13% of the world's population, have a pressing need to improve their inadequate medical and hygienic environments. Within the 53 countries in sub-Sahara Africa, there is an epidemic that is bringing destruction to the humanity of this enormous continent. There are 40 million people in Africa infected with the AIDS virus. Most will die from this devastating disease. Many children will never know what it's like to live in a family environment, if they live at all. As scientists, we all have an interest in the impact of our science. For some, there is only an interest in the publication of a discovery. For others, the driving force is how that discovery impacts society. The field of cytometry started with people like Moldavin and Gokka, two very different individuals working in totally different fields, one in biology and the other in mining engineering. For analytical cytometry to become a field, there had to be a meshing of biological need with a technical or engineering capability. How did this all begin? After the Second World War, the impact of the atomic age was a driving force for many technological developments. When I first went to Los Alamos, um, and went to work under Mar Vandilla. Our primary interest was in monitoring the fallout from atmospheric nuclear weapons testing. There were many scientists who were engaged in the study of the effect of radiation exposure. However, with the advent of the 1963 Nuclear Atmospheric Test Ban Treaty, there was less need to deal with radiation research. Marv and I then became interested in exploring at first, a Coulter counter, which is a device that's commonly used even now in hospitals to analyze blood samples, giving a blood cell count and measuring the size of the blood cells so that you can determine if an anemia is present. We had a pathologist in our uh, group who was using that device to analyze blood, and he would adjust the aperture current and some other characteristics of the machine in such a way that he could cause a small subpopulation of the red blood cell distribution to move away from the main distribution of red blood cells. And the pathologist thought that that represented immature red cells that had just been produced. Well, Marv and I did not believe that that was the case. And we set out to try to convince him that he was incorrectly using the device. And uh, we were not successful in doing that. It occurred to me that if I could just pick out this, what was thought to be abnormal population, just physically isolate those cells, run them back through the colder counter, get the same distribution, it would demonstrate that it was an artifact, that he was misusing the machine. Then I saw a paper by Dick Sweet, who at that time was at uh, Stanford Research Institute, working on a, I believe it was a Navy project, maybe an Air Force project to develop an ink writing oscillograph. And the, uh, the goal of this work was to uh, write with small droplets of ink that were generated and, uh, and uh, deflected uh, by the methods that eventually came, became the same methods used in the cell sorter. By combining Wallace Coulter's cell sorter with Dick Sweet's ink writing oscillograph, Fulweiler created a new technology for cell biologists. Before we did any work, I wrote it up, just a paper describing the idea, and passed it around to, I believe, about eight different scientists, asking them to read it and give me their opinion as to whether or not it was a feasible idea, and they thought it could be made to work. The majority of that group of eight said no, that they didn't think it would work. But under the encouragement of my boss, uh, Wright Langham and Marv Vandilla, I went ahead and tried it.
There's a piezoelectric crystal mounted in this part of the system. It's one inch in diameter and a half an inch thick. The energy, the vibrational energy produced by the crystal is coupled into a, an aluminum rod here, which rests right up against the crystal. And from the aluminum rod into this plastic horn. And so this shape of a, an acoustic horn is like a transformer. And it increases the amplitude of the motion, even though a smaller amount of mass is moving. Within this portion, the end of the plastic rod is in direct contact with the liquid. Coming out of the platinum disc then, through a small drilled orifice of about 60 microns, you have a liquid jet which travels down for perhaps a centimeter or so, and then because of the action of the piezoelectric vibration, it breaks into droplets. When we were first at Los Alamos, we came up with this system, and then Marv took it on to develop uh, the fluorescent sensing and lasers and so on. We set out to see whether we could adapt the fluorescence staining of cells that had been developed from microscopy to this uh, flow system technique where we could uh, flow them by and measure them thousands uh, per second. And so uh, we decided to move on from the Coulter principle which we had been, which had been the initiation of all of this, to optical uh, measurements of cells. Even though we were in a biological group at Los Alamos, we had a hard time getting uh, the biologists to really accept the idea of quantifying cell populations. The first biological group who could clearly see the uses of the method were the Hertzenbergs in Stanford who could see the application of fluorescent sensing to, uh, and the use of antibodies in the characterization of immunological properties of cells and of surface properties of cells. So those were the first two heavy uses, DNA analysis and um, immunological staining. At about the same time as Fulweiler, Van Diller and Hertzenberg were working in the United States, Gerda and colleagues were expanding microscope-based cytometers and were the first to publish fluorescence-based analysis in flow cytometry, as well as the distinction of building the first commercial flow cytometer to use fluorescence detection. Cytometry has changed a great deal since Mac Fulweiler invented the cell sorter in 1965. Since that first instrument, over 30,000 sorters and analyzers have made their way into laboratories around the world. The impact on science has been enormous. The African continent is under a tremendous challenge. Cytometry has become a tool of necessity for the therapeutic monitoring of the millions of AIDS patients whose very lives depend upon gaining access to drugs whose efficacy must be monitored several times each year. Reducing the cost of these tests, increasing the accuracy, making the cytometric technologies more accessible are not options, they are a necessity. If you go to Nairobi, you have now almost one million orphans at the street, alone in Nairobi, HIV orphans. The countries, the governments gave up. They have no answer what to do with them. Mac Jet Fulweiler started the process with this sorting chamber. That process has been developed over the past 40 years by many scientists around the world. Fulweiler was a great innovator. Without his invention, the field of cytometry may never have had the immense impact on health and welfare that it has. For over 25 years, cytometry has been the central tool in evaluating patients with AIDS. But unlike the large, costly instrument that Fulweiler built 40 years ago, the need now is for small, low-cost devices that can monitor CD4 levels for the 24 million Africans that have little access to these essential monitoring devices. Costly, high-tech devices do not work well in rural African environments where the greatest need exists. Cytometry for Life was created to solve this problem. We can design and build these essential diagnostic tools, but the paradigm must change. They have to be low cost, accurate and robust. 
In order to respond to the AIDS crisis across Africa, Cytometry for Life has introduced a new breed of cytometer that only measures CD4 T cells. This single functionality approach is the primary means by which we are able to offer such medical innovation at a vastly reduced cost while still maintaining the highest standards. Cytometry for Life is fully committed to the mission of minimizing gaps in coverage for CD4 testing in areas most impacted by AIDS on the African continent. Please consider how you can support the Cytometry for Life program. Cytometry for Life is an innovative program. Innovation is often a process that demands risk. Mac Fulweiler was a great innovator for cytometry. He invented the technology that each of us take for granted on a daily basis. I, th I think it's an anomaly that it happened at Los Alamos. There was no stated need for a cell sorter. Nobody expressed the idea that that was necessary or important to biology. There was no process by which a proposal was written and submitted to a uh, review board for consideration. It was a decision made by my boss, the boss of our group, Wright Langham, based on his um, opinion, substantiated by a few close advisors, that it was a worthwhile project to pursue.